Hello, this is Dr. Mark Miravalli. We find ourselves in the heart of the month of June, the month dedicated to the sacred heart of Jesus. My friends, there's nothing antiquated uh, or pre-Vatican about love and devotion and adoration to the sacred heart of Jesus. It is absolutely relevant to the 21st century uh, and to where the church in the world is right now. Uh, the heart of Jesus it, it, the symbol in the organ represents his infinite mercy. Remember, it starts at Calvary. That's where his heart is pierced and water and blood flow from his heart. Also symbolic of the waters of baptism and the blood of the Eucharist because both come at a price of his infinite love manifested in his infinite suffering at Calvary for us. Now, I want to read to you the passage of the messages of the Sacred Heart of Jesus to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in 1675, and also the promise of the Sacred Heart, and how much we need to be responding to these messages from the Heart of Jesus to your heart, into my heart, not just to the heart of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. And then as well, how we need to have a new Pentecost, a new release of the Holy Spirit to stop the widespread uh, pain and sacrilege to the heart of Jesus and to return to a time of peace and adoration of the heart of Jesus and veneration to the heart of Mary. This is called the Great Revelation of June 1675. Again, Jesus to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. One day, kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament during the octave of Corpus Christi, I was deluged with God's loving favors inspired to make some return and to give him love for love. I heard him say, Do what I've already so often asked you. You can't show your love in a finer way than that. He disclosed his divine heart as he spoke, quote, There it is, that heart so deeply in love with men, it spared no means of proof, wearing itself out until it was utterly spent. This meets with scant appreciation from most of them. All I get back is ingratitude. Witness their irreverence, their sacrileges, their coldness and contempt for me in this sacrament of love. What hurts me most is that hearts dedicated to my service behave this way. This is why I am asking you to have the Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi set apart as a special feast in honor of my heart, a day on which to receive me in holy communion and make a solemn act of reparation for the indignities I have received in the Blessed Sacrament while exposed on the altars of the world. I promise you, too, that I shall open my heart to all who honor me in this way and who get others to do the same. They will feel in all of its fullness the power of my love. So here's Jesus himself speaking about how we have this great act of love, this, this, this God who becomes man, who becomes crucified. And remember, the closest substitution for the word love is sacrifice. That's what our Lord does for us at Calvary. He sacrifices as the God-man so that we can be baptized, so that we can receive Holy Communion, so we can enter the fullness of the one holy Catholic and apostolic faith. Now, in 1895, a businessman from Dayton, Ohio, a Philip Kemper, went through the messages of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and wrote to Leo XIII, Pope Leo XIII, and asked, Have I accurately found these promises to be the twelve promises of the Sacred Heart of Jesus? On May 31st of 1899, Leo XIII writes back to this Ohio businessman and said, Yes, you have captured this well. These are the promises of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and these are just as relevant today as they were in the 17th century when they were given from Jesus to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. The promises are as follows, quote, I will give them all the graces necessary in their state and life. I will establish peace in their homes. I will comfort them in all their afflictions. I will be their secure refuge during life and above all in death. I will bestow abundant blessings upon them in all of their undertakings. Sinners will find in my heart 
the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Lukewarm souls shall become fervent. Fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. I will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored. I will give to priests the gifts of touching the most hardened hearts. Those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart. And then promise 12. I promise you in the excessive mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who receive Holy Communion on the first Fridays in nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace nor without receiving their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last moment. So here you have from the heart of Jesus, and he keeps his promises, the heart of Jesus promising us that those who show devotion to his heart, uh, those who have an image, every Catholic family should have an image of the Sacred Heart in some prominent place as a sign that, yes, this home is dedicated to that throne, that heart of Jesus so filled with love for us. But he says in that last promise, the promise of what we now know as the promise of the five, excuse me, the nine first Fridays, that on nine consecutive first Fridays, if we go to Mass and receive Jesus in communion in a state of grace, we offer it in reparation. Remember, my friends, reparation is an untold privilege for us. It means that God gives us the ability to actually balm, to console the heart of Jesus by our prayers and by our sacrifices. So we're called to do this. Now, it's also a plain fact that as Jesus talked about what offends his heart in that June 1675 message, uh, the ingratitude, those who respond to the Eucharist uh, with blasphemy, and especially those called to my service, he's talking about priests and religious in a special way, those who do not respond with love for love, those who reject my love. I think it's fair to say that on a global basis, there's never been a time since Jesus walked the earth that we're having more individuals reject the love of Jesus. So what do we need? We need a new Pentecost. We need a new coming of the Holy Spirit. Why a new Pentecost? Because remember, Jesus ascends into heaven after the sacrifice of Calvary. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes down and He renews the face of the earth. He brings grace and peace and sanctification. That's how we stop offenses to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's also telling that our Blessed Mother, has said in her apparitions that she's ready to intercede for a new Pentecost, for a new coming of the Holy Spirit to bring peace and grace and redemption to humanity. So, how do we affect a proper respect of the heart of Jesus? Through a new Pentecost, through a new release of the Holy Spirit to bring peace and sanctification to the world. How do we do that? Our Lady tells us, through a proclamation by the Pope that she's the spiritual mother of all peoples. Now, why would the Holy Spirit or Mary wait for this new descent on a proclamation of Mary? Because the Trinity wants the mother acknowledged for her suffering with Jesus and her role of distributing the graces obtained by Jesus and secondarily by her at Calvary. And that's her role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. So, indeed, it's God who wants Mary acknowledged before this new Pentecost would happen. Now, it's also rather exciting. There's a new global online petition to Pope Benedict asking for a new descent of the Holy Spirit through his proclaiming of Mary as the spiritual mother of all humanity. In just two weeks of time, there are over 60 countries represented. It's, it's a phenomenon. I really, I think it's something explainable only by the power of the Holy Spirit. That such a diversity in such a little time would respond to this petition. So I'm asking you to consider, prayerfully consider, going to www.peacethroughawoman.com. That's peacethroughawoman.com. Join international Catholic celebrities like Steve McAvity, the producer of The Passion of the Christ, and Braveheart, and Bella, and We Are Soldiers. Joining Mother Angelica, the founders of EWTN. Joining Immaculate the Rwandan author and speaker uh, who survived the Rwandan massacre and is really an ambassador of forgiveness worldwide. Join the Vatican ambassador from the Philippines, uh, the Honorable Mercedes Toisson. These and, 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 and thousands of people worldwide are now coming together on this petition asking the Pope to make the proclamation that Mary has asked, that she's spiritual mother 
of humanity. So I invite you, go to peacefulwoman.com for the service of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, for a new Pentecost through a proclamation of Mary. That is how we bring peace to the world. She said specifically in her apparitions, for example, at Amsterdam, that only with the proclamation of the dogma, the final Marian dogma, will peace enter the world and we have a new descent of the Holy Spirit. So now it's our time to respond. I encourage you once, ago, once again to go to peacethroughwoman.com, add your name to the people from over 60 countries who have brought this forward, and let's do our part to have the Sacred Heart of Jesus respected and adored, and a new Pentecost bringing peace and grace to the world through Mary. Thanks, and God bless.